and welcome to Connected. I am happy and ready to converse with Amanda Sage. Her creations as a visionary artist are breathtaking. This woman is on a mission and she will share with us her wisdom and projects. Do not go anywhere. Connected starts right now. It is with great pleasure that today I introduce Amanda Sach. Amanda, thank you so much for taking the time. I waited for this day for so long. I'm really excited and thankful for you to be here today. Welcome to Connected. I don't want to waste any more time, so let's go ahead with the first question. Tell us, please, how did your life lead you towards the path of art? Hmm. I think my my whole life was, I don't know, how did it lead to it? It was, it, it became, it happened. Like, because I think I didn't um, get distracted in a different way, into a different path. I was always interested in, in uh many things. I felt very interested in um, theater and in rap and, and um, working with with people. I've always enjoyed working with people. And the art just kind of evolved as a way that I could also, um, yeah, make money. When I was 14, I started painting on t-shirts <laughs> because I didn't have any money for Christmas presents. And so that was um, that was one of the, the ways that it, it, it began, but I, I just always loved it. It was a wonderful way to express. I see. And how was your first approach to visionary art? How did you identify your call? I think it started to come through when I really asked myself, not just what like could I paint it was what did I really want to share with the world like what was what kind of gift did I feel like I really had um, and how I could participate also in helping people um, become more open and more free more awake and that was really I, I could I saw that art could be a tool for that and so I think the visionary art really comes from that essence too. That, that, that's like one of the main kind of goals maybe. The visionary art is very broad, it's very broad. So tell us, how do you express intention through your technique? How it is that you say, okay, you saw something that of course is not a chair, is not a table, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about spirituality and feelings and emotions. 
How do you like put it on 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 color? Well, it's it's actually that's a really great question because it's one of the ways that I think my paintings、um, really come to be, and it begins with what you said as a feeling. And there's there's also an idea sometimes. There's like a a direction that I want to go, but I don't really know how I'm going to get there. As much as I know that I have a way, a, a, a rhythm, and a system that I can follow. And so I begin with this feeling that kind of directs me to a, a color, and it directs me to a place on the canvas that I begin, and that feeling continues to grow and to direct me. So there's it's kind of like a it's some kind of a, a dance. I don't.、Uh, it's almost like a, a channeling or a connecting with the idea, and then also working with the kind of.、Um, It's a prayer, you know, in some ways, and so I feel like I'm working with other, other things as well with my environment. I'm working with my environment. I'm listening to my environment, and also if I'm working in a live setting, if I'm doing performance painting, I'm really connected to the music and the people around me, and the smells and the place and the, you know, and then also what is the what is the greatest vision of that place of the of those people? What could help us? Feel even like more inspired and、um, and more full of wonder because I feel like when we're in that state, we become really,、um, yeah, we become brighter, more alive. I agree. What would you say it's your message or the message of visionary art? What what does it mean, visionary art, as art and as a culture? Well, I think my individual message is. You know that's that's just like each of us kind of has our own kind of perspective and way that we see things, and our own kind of、um, contribution, right?、Um, and I feel that my contribution in visionary art, you know, it's a it's a it's a discovery game too of of what is what is it what is a vision what is it to have vision what is Visionary art, but it's something that's so deep in us, and I feel like it's something that is,、um, has always been, and it and it comes through our experience with with spirit and with with life, you know, and the greater questions of kind of what what is going on, <laughs> and weaving meaning and also、uh, value,、uh, and so I think that exploration, visionary art, is something that's happening all over the world, and it always has been. It's just now finding more plots as people are realizing that it's a、um, and and expressing some of their and more free also to express their inner world and what they're really experiencing. So visionary art in many ways comes from the inner world's、um, experience, also connected with the outer world. So you spoke to culture. And so this culture is fascinating because it's bringing people together to celebrate what their connection. I think that's really、um, and connection to the earth, connection to the animals, connection to the plants, and coming back to this kind of like to remembering that there's that there is an intuitive connection that happened that that is with with life and with the cycles of the earth, right? And then with each other. And when we have that, we have a much more Abundant life, I think, like in our relationships and in our in our society. So I feel more connected to that. I feel very drawn to want to contribute to that world, that visionary culture. And I think that's what a lot of our world is looking for now. As we as we look at the wars and we look at the hunger and we look at all these things, and we're like, what are we doing, people? <laughs> you know. So we need to come together and figure that out. Yeah, I think visionary culture is doing that, and I think visionary art. I want to see visionary art become more active too, towards really addressing this. And I think art is often at the forefront of a movement, right? And this is international; it's all over the world. Like, look at you and I. We're in totally different parts of the world, and we have a connection that brings us together because you saw my art. But often, you know, or you hear a song. 
or you hear something and this is one of the the ways that we bridge the world we remember that we're truly we're humanity we're citizens of the planet and we need to care for the planet right and also care for each other yeah. going going forward I know that well you have like your your history or your story doing all of your work but then you gave you gave another spe a step you took another step and you uh, launched an eco-friendly um, clothing uh, clothing fashion line mm. tell me about that when did it happen and how did you did you make it happen well I've been connecting art and painting with clothing since I was a child. And I've always, I've never actually done much sewing myself, but I've worked together with other people. Um, and I usually contribute the images. And so this, this actual clothing, like I'm wearing some of it. I'll tell you about some of it. This, these prints, this all started about five years ago in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. When I met um, a group of, a, a group of women then, and we were all from different parts of the world. Jabnam Q, she's from Afghanistan originally. Lana's from uh, from Russia, and uh, and then Sherry Ray's from California. We were all this crew, and, and we had we had this idea: let's make a pattern maker, fashion designer, painter. So we we started to make this line, and we decided. I, I said, to, I, I really am most interested in doing everything. Like, how can we? Um, make it more ethical? How can we make it more environmentally friendly? How can we also make things, and you've mentioned this before, that are more, we bring into the everyday um, world of functional things. How can we make it more precious so that we take care of it better, right. so that we feel also more empowered and we feel stronger and more. So I think, I think clothing, I think clothing really does help us Um, feel stronger, more um, empowered, you know, and and that is, it's like a second skin. So, and it's a, it's a flag that we wear, whatever we wear, we believe in. So, uh, you know, even yes. if you're doing it unconsciously, you're still uh, wearing, you know, when you wear a brand. So I think people are more and more interested in this too, in, in wearing and in buying and supporting things that they believe in, right? And I think this is a very important movement. So tell me a little bit about how did you connect and you made your clothing because you made you make it out of uh, recycled yeah. bottles, correct? Yeah, it's recycled plastic bottle material that we use for the that we've been using for the leggings and for the all the active wear. And that um, was a very intentional thing. It, it cost us a lot more to produce them because of process that it has to go through to make the bot this fabric. Um, and in, in many ways, it has brought attention. It was, um, you know, to think, be more, be more concerned and more aware and, uh, you know, to go to greater length to not be putting more plastic into the environment. But as I've learned right. over the years, though, too, it's not the answer. It's not like this is, well, there we go. We're now, you know, being environmentally and eco-friendly means that you're going to discover a lot of things around the whole process and all of the things, especially with clothing, that really is still not the best for the environment. So I'm right. interested in continuing to evolve. And our whole group is is working on, on looking at how we can uh, print now, do more printing on natural fibers. I want to be using also uh, more natural dyes And all of these things are, are steps, right? And I don't think any one of us is absolutely doing it perfect, <laughs> right? And, but right. And, it's a process. It's a, something that is still happening, is still improving, getting better. But, I do have a pair of shorts that I bought five years ago and I still have them and they're perfect and I love them, they're my favorite. <laughs> I'll have to send you something new. You give me your eyes. Oh, I would love to. All right, so. We talked about your art, your paintings. We talk about your clothing, um, the, the clothing that you make. So tell me about your activities today. What else are you up to? Oh gosh, I'm up to so much, but 
Hi, <laughs> that's awesome. Please tell me everything. I'm so excited about, oh God, which one to talk about first. Uh, one of them, so I'm, I'm, there's a painting that I'm doing right now that I'm working on about this woman. It's a portrait of Marianne Williamson. And she's an absolutely incredible human being that is, has taken up the, the, the vision and role to run for the U.S. presidency that's uh, next year. And I am enjoying listening to her so much as she talks about bringing love back into politics and really speaking to a big, to the broader issue of health wow. instead of uh, in all aspects, well. right? And, and true health instead of just addressing symptoms, right? And so I'm really enjoying that. I'm getting more political, feeling like it's, it's really important that we speak out more using our, using artwork also to do that. And uh, another thing that I've been really passionate about um, and getting ever more passionate about is the vision and train. And this is something that I started seeing about eight years ago and it started coming into my paintings where I saw um, this vessel of the train being the carrier that we could all get on together and that we could go back on the tracks of this industrial revolution that kind of and colonization that took over the world and we could really start right. to come together with all the gifts and the good that we have developed and that we that we have today and all the genius of humanity of all of our cultural um, differences and all of our beautiful, you know, variety of, of, of all the good. And so um, this has been, there's a lot that I could, we could do a whole show on that at some point. <laughs> yes, um, I'm sure. But, yes. But what we're do, what I've done is the, the vision train, and I'll show you it's one of this, it's a little line drawing ah. of a train car. And, True. And so I invite everybody to draw their vision inside of the train car like what's your prayer what's your vision and then you can write on the back and so i've collected uh -huh. i've collected like almost a thousand of these and of different people and oh, everybody's wow. invited to draw their vision this one's funny somebody's riding a carrot <laughs> and then wow. they can write about their vision and, and but you're kind of making people like a part yes. of it not no, actively yes. That is so, and so great. so with children and with everybody. And so I'm really excited to finally get the website up where really the international community and people all over the world can really contribute to this. And um, we can strengthen each other's prayers this way. And we can also gather a momentum, right? Of the good, right? right? And we, and these are our prayers. We're, so often the media points us towards all the, the bad and the, you know, separation what we are different right i always i am also for always look for to celebrate uh what we have in common because i think we have more in common than different i agree with you totally so this is one of this is a contribution to that great vision of of coming together of remembering our unique genius that each of us has and so we and so that really inspires me and so the train also needs train stations right and so right now where where i live um one of the places i live here in colorado is we call this a train station and it's actually an old sawmill of an old eastern town that we've been turning into an artifactory and it has different which is where you are right now yes. right yes. That is so great. It's so cool. It's brilliant. Tell me more. Yeah, so we have gardens here. We have a somatic art studio for yoga and meditation and gathering. We have a nonprofit that's it's uh, from this valley. It's not ours. We don't run it, but this is a this is a micro um, uh, village kind of with different projects within it. So one of those nonprofits is called Mountain Roots. And they're a food security program here in this valley. And uh, so they connect all the different local organic farmers and and collect all the food right. in one of our, tra we have these old train cars here. And one of them is, a, is an old refrigerator car. And that's, we turned <sighs> it into a refrigerator again. And so that's where all the food is stored in the, in the summer months. And people come to, and every week to pick up their box of produce that's part of the program 
and um, and we have yeah. gatherings with workshops, the salvage yard. My partner Joe Bob Merritt, this is his great vision of the architecture of remembrance. And we see this as a South Main anywhere, something that can be done anywhere in the world, any town. What you do is you take an old industrial site, something that is kind of abandoned, and you establish a workshop for metal and wood and a housing. And then you start building, collecting all the, you know, abandoned material that people throw away from, from building sites. And then you can start to piece the place back together again in a, in a creative way of, and, and then bring the community together and you can continue. Right. And so this is uh, something that is really effective here in our small town. Um, people love to come here and it's, we're just starting to get even more momentum of workshops and, uh, you know, and so it's an example. We want to create ex an example. And then I travel around the world and do workshops too. Um, where we go deep into an eco village and we paint together and we really, you know, we create new relations and we learn because I think this is a new era. People are craving to learn and to remember their roots, you know, and to be, it's true. Yeah, become, become more connected with the earth and themselves and each other. So I'm very happy to very, very enthusiastic around being uh, contributing to, to the greater visionary culture. Yeah. Um, Amanda, thank you so much for this interview and for everything you told us. Mm -hmm. It's it's very inspiring and I think that is what the world needs more and more every day. Mm -hmm. Please share your social media information. Go ahead. So the easiest way to find me and where I post the most is Instagram, uh, Amanda Sage Art. And you can find me also on Facebook. Also, there's a page, Amanda Sage Art. So everything that's on Instagram, you'll find on Facebook. And I interact on both. Um, yeah. And my website, amandasage.com. And the collection is amandasagecollection.com. It's very easy to find and navigate if you're, if you're interested. Amanda, a big kiss all the way to Colorado. And I hope you're always well. And thank you again. Thank you so much. I hope to come to Bolivia one day. I would love to. Please do. Please do. Bye-bye. We'll be in touch. Ciao. Thank you. I cannot emphasize enough about the importance of cultivating ourselves. Amazing people like Amanda are more and more active creating these spaces. Take the time, get informed, and experience it. To connect with me, send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time, bye-bye.